we're at almost at the end of the book but the drama doesn't end in fact the drama gets more heated up with each continuing chapter chapter 37 and 38 jeremiah's imprisonment so here it speaks it will not speak of jehoiakim anymore from this time on the the enemy the barbarians are really surrounding the city is they're coming in so 37 speaks of Zadokiah, Zadokiah the vacillating king. He was the, the puppet king put in by Nebuchadnezzar. Understand that he always owes his position and allegiance to Nebuchadnezzar. But at the same time, he's thinking that something will change. He's amassing an army and he wants to fight off Nebuchadnezzar. So here is, here is vacillating. So he sent word to Jeremiah. Yeah, ask somebody, ask the prophet, has anything changed? Yeah, is there a word from God? <laughs> like that something will change. So here in chapter 37, verse 5, it says, Pharaoh's army came forth out of Egypt. And when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem heard tidings, they departed from Jerusalem. So there was a brief reprieve in the sense that, you yeah, know, even as Nebuchadnezzar, the Chaldean army, was a mess around Jerusalem because Egypt was coming out to help Zadokiah and, and Judah. So they had to, the Chaldeans had to retreat and take care of the Egyptians. So there was a, a short re, uh, reprieve. And what does Jeremiah, the prophet, verse 6, Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, the prophet. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall you say to the king of Judah that sent you unto me to inquire of me, Behold, Pharaoh's army, which is sent, come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. So Egypt is not, you know, Isaiah years, you know, centuries ago has already predicted that. Don't ask for Egypt. Egypt will not help you. Egypt is like the shadow of Egypt. Huh? You kidding? So here, Zedekiah keeps thinking <laughs> maybe maybe something's changed. God changed his mind or something. Ask the prophet Jeremiah, is that new word from the Lord? He said, No. You know, Egypt will return home. Nothing's gonna be done. Deceive yourself not, verse 9. The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us. They shall not depart. So and though, verse 10, for though you have smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, they remain. But wounded men among them, see, you, even if you were to defeat them, there will be wounded men among them who will defeat us because Jeremiah in previous chapters has already predicted, look behind, who's behind the Chaldean army? God himself is like, you're fighting against God. So verse 10, definitely, when the army of the Chaldeans were broken up from Jerusalem for fear of the uh, Pharaoh's army, so they came back again. So here, <laughs> it's hard to keep track of everything. So here, what happens? The captain of, so uh, Jeremiah went, decided, I'm giving up. I'm going home to Anatoth, you know, it is in the city of Benjamin. So as he was going, as he was going into the gate of Benjamin, captain of Zadokai's army came to him, Eva, Eva came to him and took hold of Jeremiah. You're not going anywhere, come back. You know, went, took him back to the palace and put him in prison. See, this guy, he, they think that, you know, he's treasonous. He's saying that we're going to lose to the Chaldeans. He said, just surrender to the Chaldeans because God is not with you. Just go into exile, finish the 70 years, and then God will bring you back. It's like, this is this guy, this Jeremiah is a traitor. He's treasonous. So Iriha took hold of Jeremiah and took him back to the palace and put him into prison. So that's what happens to Jeremiah. So at the end of verse of chapter 37, verse 21, so Zedekiah commanded that they should 
commit Jeremiah into the court of the prison and that they should give him daily a piece of bread out of the Baker Street. <laughs> Just one piece of bread. Until all the bread in the city was spent, thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. He was in prison. He could go anywhere and do anything. And so what happened that would cause him to go to another, into the dungeon? So here in 38, thus saith the Lord, he that remaineth in, so here again, they ask Jeremiah, as, you know, they, you know, a few times Zedekiah secretly asked Jeremiah, don't tell anybody, I'm consulting you, you know. What does, what does the Lord say? So again, the message hasn't changed. 38 verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in the city shall die by the sword. If not by the sword, by famine. If not by famine, by pestilence. But he that goeth forth into the Chaldeans shall live, and she, he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. See? So it's only the siege is only because Zedekiah held out that that the Chaldeans besiege the city. Nothing comes in, nothing comes goes out. That they starve. But if you were to to go outside of the city into the countryside, whether you go to Babylon or not, you live. Say so even in the second the destruction of the second temple, Jesus warned. You know when this time comes, when you see the army besieging the city. Run, run to the hills. Pray that you're not pregnant if you're a woman. Run to the hills, exactly. Don't go in the city anymore. You'll die in the city. See, it's the same situation here. Run to the hills because in the hills there's water. You're free to roam around, to eat whatever you can find there, to drink whatever water is there. And if you want, go to Babylon, see. Just say, I surrender, I'm going with you, whatever it is, see. But... For some reason, the stubbornness of Jeremiah won't, of Zadokiah won't give in. They said, surely this is God's city and won't. So, so here, he's conti Jeremiah is continuing this narrative and it angers the people, the army. And so what happens? We got to kill this guy because he he's demoralizing the army who's ready to fight the Chaldeans. It's like, huh? So what do they do? They put him into a dungeon, which is was a cistern. So what is? A, so it's not just a regular prison. You go inside a prison, there are, you know there's gates and stuff. You're locked inside, but a dungeon is something. It's a hole in the ground, probably a cistern where it's just a, a small opening for one person to, to drop down what's in there. Only God knows, because if you're lucky, food and water gets dropped into there. If not, so you do your business there, you die there. So one can only imagine what that dungeon was. So here's Zedekiah, say, okay, do whatever you want. You know, say, here's what it's called blood libel. I will not personally take a knife and kill you, but I will let people do the dirty job. Their blood is on their hands. See, it's the same same kind of thing that Pontius Pilate said. Okay, you wash his hands. His blood is not on my hands. You guys do whatever you want, knowing that they were, they're going to crucify Jesus. Here, the same thing, knowing that you know, Zadokai said, do whatever you want with him, okay? His blood is not my, on my hands. He will die there for sure. He will die there. Usually just chuck them in the head first so they'll break their necks and die there, see. So it's like, so nobody's hands is dirty in the sense that they did not lift the, the, the sword or knife and, 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 and shed blood, you know. They probably fell in there and died. <laughs> That's how it's done. Maybe it's done here too. So here, well, for, for, whatever reason, instead of chucking him in there where he's going to be half mired in miry, mire, you know, God knows what that mire is. He's going to be, you know, you can't sleep, you can't lie down, you're just standing waist deep in muck. Muck is a nice word. With no food or water, it's just darkness. So eventually you will starve to death there. 
And there came this man. So throughout this saga of the of you know the siege, you you will read you know pockets, little pockets of humanity. There was this man, Ibit Malik. That's not really his name. It just means slave of the king. He is a, a eunuch. He is from Ethiopia, so he's dark skin. Yeah, he's African. Imagine. He saw. He said to the king, "Surely he will die there. Can I take him out?" The king, Zadokai, said, "Okay." So how do you take him out? You know. So he, this guy Ibit Malik, went to to the houses and I got a whole of rags and tie rags together, lowered it down and told Jeremiah, "Put it round your waist and we will hoist you up that way." And that's what they did. And thus, say verse. 12 of 38 says, And Ibit Malak the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, Put now these old cast clouts and rotten rags under thy armhole, under the courts. And Jeremiah did so, and they drew him out that way. So, glory to God, he, he was saved. Here again, we hear read of Zadokiah going to Jeremiah a third time secretly to inquire verse 14 i will ask thee one thing hide nothing from me and jeremiah said i declared to you see not just that i will tell you what's going to happen to you okay you will not see death you will live out your life okay what happens is you will see the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, face to face, you will speak with him. You will see your sons and the nobles in your palace die, killed by the, the Chaldeans. And he said, you will not, you will see it. Okay, you will smell the burning of the city and you, they will gorge, take your eyes out and will lead you into Babylon into exile. And verse 22 is really poignant. As with all wartime, you know, if we think nothing of people, we should think of our own household, especially the women folk in the house, in our household. Verse 22 is very poignant because all the victims of war are usually the women folk. So he said, look upon your women folk, your wives, your daughters, your maidservants, you know, all paraded in front of the Chaldeans, in front of the conqueror's armies. So verse 23, So they shall bring out all thy wives, thy children, to the Chaldeans, and thou shalt not escape. So think of them. You know, what will happen? Say, so wartime, the women folk suffer the most, the most abuse. Verse 28, so Jeremiah abode in the court of the prison until the day that Jerusalem was taken, and he was there when Jerusalem was taken. So there's no more drama. He was, he was right there. What happens to him, we will read off in 39, the fall of Jerusalem, 4041, what happened to Jeremiah. And, you know, it's a side note, during the Japanese war, in the Second World War, in the Far East, in the rape of Nanking, the women folk of China were sport. They were raped and ravaged, and then when they were done with them, they were used as for bay bayonet practice. And even, I think, in Serbia War too, women folk were raped and, and ravaged. So the women folk suffer the most in wartime and not any different here in the siege of Jerusalem.